one. Yes, talk about Prada. So, um, Prada put together their first co, I guess, co-design collection for menswear between Mikusia Prada and Raf Simmons. Raf Simmons, obviously known as uh, one of the leaders and one of the most inspirational, um, yeah, inspirational menswear designers of his time, linking together with somebody like Mikusia Prada, who's kind of one of the most intellectual man, uh, designers of her time as well, for a collection that, in my opinion, was probably one of the best displays of outerwear that i've seen in a very very long time makes sense considering the prowess of two designers but god damn was this debut more than um everything that we've been hoping to kind of see from these two powerhouses coming together and it was absolutely sublime so many nice pieces in it um to kind of divulge in um of course this is courtesy of, uh vogue runway um, we'll read a couple of quotes here from the review, a uh, couple of paragraphs, sorry, it says the following, um, it's, a f uh, it's a feeling, at the same time we were very attracted to not working with during a narrative, during the post uh, show Q&A and then later on Zoom press conference, both Bakusha Prada and Raf Simmons emphasised that these collections um, design was intended to stir sensations rather than signal some storyline, that was one significant departure from the first co-creatively um, co -creatively directed mentor collection offered by the two in staging setting music decoration and more past part of shows have often featured reverse engineered clues obliquely telling easter eggs that allow a reading to unfold and of course that's what you get with these two heavy hitters isn't it um, a lot of from what I've seen so far of the fashion of course that I've been following a lot of it kind of follows a narrative a theme of some regard you kind of like design around and you sort of your collection is basically your attempt to display and illustrate the world that that theme encapsulates but I've found that the top head the top 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 designers for the most part it just comes out of the it just comes out of thin air they're just able to sort of like take an idea and somehow be able to distill it or ideate it across you know 20 plus looks into accessories from this malarkey for just one point it doesn't necessarily have to be a theme it could be a color it could be a sound it could be a phrase it could be a uh, a feeling and that's really what they do at the top level and again it's it's unfair because it's something that a lot of people can kind of copy or emulate at all because it just feels like it's something you have or you don't have. Uh, the second paragraph here says, Today, instead, we saw a menswear collection dominated by a garment that acted as a single motif that could, depending on your feeling, be worn, felt, and seen in multiple ways. The garment was a knit patterned long john above the foundation of a model wearing it. A long john was the cladding upon which every look in the show was constructed, although sometimes that look went unadorned or long john. Um, no one long john. Uh, no one long john was the same no one long john was the same so the patterns were sometimes art deco sometimes adapt argyle uh, adapted argyle sometimes else so sometimes something else necklines varied from turtle to v to polo to round yarns and ply spanned mohair fine gauge shetland and more so let's come on to the pictures here and again like i said just outwear heavy to the teeth and just another ex another illustration as to why i always think the best menswear collections whether they're streetwear whether they're fashion always in my opinion start with four you don't get good menswear in spring I, I just don't think and that's the difference I think fundamentally with my idea where I always say I think men can be stylish but I don't think they could be fashionable because I think w women's fashion definitely exists um probably at its highest level in spring and maybe sometimes also in fall but men's only lives in fall in terms of coats and jackets and jumpers and trousers and big pants and whatever it may be that's where it kind of exists and it's hard to be fashionable with those big sturdy garments right i feel fashionable you can kind of be a little bit more is when it's stuff is a bit more loose and you can just kind of throw on top of a model and pull here and tighten there um but again that's a story for another day but again uh, this little styling detail which i don't think i'm not sure if it's a styling detail or a feature of the actual jacket maybe there's a some sort of uh pulley or string in there that allows you to pull it but i love that little detail here where you sort of like pulling up the cuffs and exposing um this tight knit on the inside that was of course brilliant let's continue here it's got the same one there too same there too of course this is the long john thing featured in the actual um review that they were speaking about the set design is absolutely lush who the, who did the soundtrack was it rishi horton or somebody somebody electronic did the soundtrack i saw it 
on my feed briefly i don't know who it was but if you know let me know in the comments but yeah just utterly utterly beautiful man and then of course the coats and the standout piece that everyone's sort of talking about under on, on the timeline with the gloves on his pockets but the coats themselves were just so well done you had that kind of boxy um oversized proportions that you know and love from raf but also that kind of exquisite tailoring where it sort of looks like it just fits you like a glove that again like i always say kind of occupies the higher levels of fashion where they can take like a simple pea coat a simple double-breasted jacket and just elevate it to a level where it sort of looks like the thing that you're used to seeing every single day but it's definitely got a bit of a twist and that's what you see more so at the highest level i feel like sometimes that's why probably a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about these new designers when they come in especially into the game they probably try too many tricks and they, they probably go a bit too crazy with everything and they think like you know the biggest the brightest the most wackiest design is basically going to win um and then also they have the tendency to not being able to really make a mundane item such as a trench coat look elevated or look somewhat luxurious as some of the better designers are and again i don't know what that is i'm not sure if that's a training thing or if that's just a innate talent but there is this difference between how somebody like a raf simmons or musha prada designs uh a simple kind of knit jumper and however else you know you can kind of name there's just levels to it um and then of course the detail with these leather um gl gloves with the bags that first came into what into the collective consciousness i'm gonna say it was that collection where everyone looked like they came from the adams family was that 2017 right where they had all the crazy hair and the big boots that all the girls are wearing nowadays that's the first time we saw these sort of pockets that kind of usually adorn the outside of the boot now they've been kind of plopped onto the side of uh onto the top i guess your your top of your hand sort of side on the leather glove i wonder if they're going to be detachable because i know for the boots you can detach them you've got like a little um strap that sort of like ties them on the back uh but i wonder if they can detach on the actual glove and i also wonder pricing wise well how much they're going to end up being they're probably going to end up being bucks and a half but it's such a clever clever piece of an accessory an easy thing that's going to be seen on editorials all over the place and something that will sell very very easily of course depending on the price by sort people will pay for it doesn't matter because those boots for instance they're like three thousand pound aren't they with all the pockets in them and they've been selling like absolute hotcakes so much so that there's fakes on alibaba all over the place now and other um what are they called pretty little things type of shops they have kind of they've copied that boot style already so i can imagine this being kind of copied from loads of different brands too um so that was cool and of course the ability to store some indiscriminate things in that pocket you know on your way out um let's continue here and of course the colors are always beautiful um i love this twist on the classic bomber jacket you know this is i always say there's too many bomber jackets on the market and then you see another bomber jacket made by a designer of a high caliber and you're like i need this right this is just sublime um an oversized bomber jacket with this amazing print that you still see on the long johns i'm assuming um featured here on the waistband on the cuffs with the pocket here on the side just lovely done beautifully done sorry lovely done but you know what i mean just gorgeous 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 of course another illustration of the bomber jacket of the overcoat great pants there and then this coat wherever this one is this double-breasted coat is one of my favorites look at the buttons it's got the same sort of like motif that you see the little badge the upside down triangle that's featured on the bag on the print of the actual buttons like so good um it continues here got the same jacket in gray <sighs> that whatever material that is is beautiful i'm assuming it's leather um you got again sweats the knit the cardigans you of course got the long johns of course here staple for i was mentioning in a review the colors and the tones of everything are gorgeous and again this leather jacket this but again another bomber jacket and i'm assuming it's leather which looks beautiful with the gloves with the pockets on the outside just so so well done even the shoes look quite rather interesting these little derby uh platformy type shoes look very nice derby dress shoes in purple again the same jacket and i think my favorite look is this coming up here with the bag underneath the shoulder underneath the armpit this is 100 my favorite look like that it just looks so good 
that's look number 31 in case you just listen to the podcast you've got this i'm not sure if it's piles i don't know what what that material is on that jacket but whatever material that is it's sort of just over knee length material um big massive buttons here on the front i'm assuming with the logo there you've got the pockets at the right length too which is another underrated aspect of coats from luxury brands they always seem to have the pockets in the right place for you to kind of rest your hands in and not feel like you're kind of constrained by the jacket and you've got this nice bag here on the inside of the arm it looks like a little leather backpack with maybe some uh, bits of core prada hardware there and then of course you've got the same look with the sort of shorter jacket kind of just above knee length it looks like so just beautifully done great bits of styling great color combination and color blocking you of course that little styling tip there with the sleeves pulled up might be something you'll see i, I, I was gonna say in street style looks but you there's no street style at the moment but regardless yeah see so it's got the detail but i definitely think it's a cool little detail there what's up in the nails the tips painted what's up what's up in the nails and it's not um but yeah it looks brilliant man what a debut was it a debut is it the first one i did the first one before i don't know regardless it's it's, it's lovely ref simmons and prada uh combined menswear show definitely one of my favorites and then it made me think uh about my all-time favorite ref simmons or all-time favorite prada collection which made me think about the greatness of mikusha prada was this from 2010 for menswear 2010 was my favorite because i remember listening or reading an interview or something about mikusha prada and someone said something like oh whenever she's designing she always starts from one point of reference and it's always about things that she's not into right she purposely designs clothing for stuff that she doesn't care about because it allows i think something like she likes being detached from it and not being too overly invested in the things she's designing for and supposedly this is obviously maybe a reference to the corporate world to the kind of you know it, I, I, i'm not too sure if this collection 2010 came out during the whole take ivy resurgence remember when everyone was trying to dress like a ivy league student from the 70s and that massive take ivy book was popular and japanese brands were you know, sh you know high putting out magazine after magazine with different scans of various people from those years gone by wearing this sort of like you know um geography teacher outfit with the sweatshirt underneath a blazer uh a pair of loafers and slacks and stuff do you remember that that was a whole period i'm not sure if that was a thing but regardless this is definitely easily one of my favorite collections of all time this kind of um opened my eyes to the greatness of prada um that loved the proportions the shrunken uh mohairish type uh jumpers there on the inside the the slight flare on the bottom of the slacks the amazing loafers with the kind of exaggerated tassel on the front just beautiful and this digi camera was sort of like this kind of you know whatever you'd call that camera print i remember that was the first i, I think that might be one of the first proper runway pieces that i seen in real life because you know i don't get to go to shows i don't necessarily hang out with fashion people so you don't get to see this stuff actually being worn and i remember i got the train it might have been a northern line somewhere and i saw an asian lady wearing one of the coats that was featured in his collection it might have been the purplish one let me just go through some of the looks here but oh so beautiful this whole thing man it's so gorgeous loads of browns yellows warm colors and look at that look at that look look 15 so good i'd wear the hell out of that outfit man it's absolutely amazing and it looks so modern now it still it doesn't look like something that came out what 10 years ago if that right so great and i remember i saw somebody look at this look I, I i think i saw a lady i'm gonna say it was a jacket like that but it was a yellowy type of uh camera print let me see if i can find it yeah i think it was coming up here it was like yeah i think it was one it's like a yellowy greeny yeah there it was i think it was this color i saw a lady wearing it on a train that color of a coat i was like wow yeah i think that made my favorite look of the entire thing 37 all black you got this amazing cardigan with a belt uh fastening here on, on the waist uh what do you call that a deep neck o neck sort of like sweatshirt that doesn't look like something you buy at zara it's a level above but just look at the entire thing it just looks mad good in it yeah i think it was one of these coats that i saw some lady wearing on the train it was definitely one of the camera ones for sure i was like fuck me it made my eyes pop out of my head i'm sure she recognized it as well and look at that look at the neck fastening you got is it what do you call that is that like an o 
um in closing you see that a lot on like what what was those shirts um not kafka i don't know what that shirt is Phoebe Fire did that a lot what's that I don't know it's called something whatever that finishes on the cuff on the cuff what am I talking about whatever that thing is anyway it's not cuffs it's where the yeah, next pops out but I love that shape but yeah um, Prada for 20, 2010 one of my collections four favourite collections of all time probably favourite from Mikusha Prada herself anyway and definitely goes to show her level of greatness but yeah that was definitely a standout from this week um, so far 